keep it shorter. Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Speak English. That's our next challenge. Our conversation challenge. VIP members, watch your email. I'm sending you a link for our next video call. Looking forward to talking to all you VIP members. We will discuss the three-month challenge that we're doing. I want all VIP members to join this. And of course, the challenge is open to everybody, not only VIP members, to everybody. I will be giving some extra coaching to my VIP members. So VIP members, check your email. Not now. I, I'll send the email. Let me look at the, my calendar. Probably in the next two day, two three days, I'll check. I'll do it. So just watch your email so that you get that link. Looking forward to talking to you again. If you're not a VIP member, join at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. You get lessons. Of course, you get new lessons every month. And uh, you also get to talk to me and get our coaching for this new challenge. I will be sure to help VIP members get big improvements in the next three months and really, and all of you too, because I will be talking about the challenge in this show. It's open to everyone, free, all that. Today, we're going to talk about vocabulary again. I'm, I said I would do a show about the gold list method. I've just started using it myself for vocabulary review, the gold list method. And uh, I'll give you a couple of websites where you can go and read more about the gold list. So I'll talk about it. If you're still confused about it a little bit, it's a little confusing, honestly. Um, so if, if you're still confused after this show, you can go to those links, to those websites, and you can learn more. But basically, the gold list method is a vocabulary review method. It's a way to learn vocabulary uh, long term, and this is what the uh, the creator, his name was David James, um, s says is the the big benefit is that this is focused on long term memory, right? And the other benefit is that it's kind of stress free. It's a very relaxing way, and uh, I would say kind of old school. It's an idiom. Old school means old style, right? Traditional style uh, way of reviewing vocab, right? So there are no apps. <laughs> you don't need your phone, no screens. I like this. I already spend a lot of time on my computer doing my, my job during work. So I, I don't like being on screens. I def I don't like cell phones at all. So except just talking, right? But I don't like apps and eh, I don't want to be looking at a screen all the time. So I very much like just using a notebook, a regular notebook and a pen. <laughs> and I do think it helps long-term memory to physically write phrases in a book. And I talk about this. It's my first rule of effortless English is, you know, learning phrases. And uh, I think this gold list method is a more, is a, is a very organized way to learn phrases and to review. For our challenge, you're going to need to, you got to, you know, as I mentioned yesterday, you've got to find the vocab and then you have to review it. So for finding it, you can use my VIP lessons or Power English lessons, right? You can, that's why you get text also. So you can, anything that's new or any phrases you want to uh, learn deeply, learn long term, just uh, write them, and do the gold list, put them in a notebook and follow the gold list system. So you're listening, listening, listening to your lessons, doing the effortless English system as usual. And then you can also spend maybe 20 minutes a day. That's not, not so much. You don't need to do a lot. You can spend 20 minutes a day doing the gold list method to review that vocab from, from the lessons. 
if you're more advanced, and many of you are more advanced, you might uh, also read a book. It's a, Books are a good place to find uh, vocabulary. You could read my book, which is uh, pretty simple English, not too, not too difficult. Or you could read like a whole novel. You could read, you know, Lord of the Rings if you really wanted to, something like that, more difficult. All right, let's go. Let's talk about the gold list. And hey, Julia Taquita, and hello, Ibrahim Ali, and hello, everyone else joining live. I'll get to your questions in a minute. But first, let's talk about the gold list. Okay, I found a couple good places to learn more about the gold list. Uh, first is the creator of the gold list has a website. And so that's probably a good place to start. The guy who made it. <laughs> okay, and uh, if you're looking on, the, uh, on your screen, you'll see that... Uh, it's hooliganoff.tv, which is a weird name, right? Uh, I think it's, I, I don't even know what it means. It sounds Russian, but I don't know. H-U-L-I-G-A-N-O-V dot TV, hooliganoff.tv. And then he's got a lot of things on his blog. Um, but if you look on his menu, you'll find gold list method up near the top. Gold list method. Oh, sorry can't see me huh okay now uh this is probably the most detailed uh if you click on the gold list method on his website he has a very 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 detailed uh explanation of the gold list method for vocab how to use it why to use it his experience with it all of this S uh but it's a little complicated i think this one's a his explanation is very good and very detailed but if you're new if this is the gold list is very new for you, I think I found a better one if you're a total beginner just trying this for the first time. So I'm going to actually go to that second one. So check this guy's out because he created it. But also check out... Oh, that's a jujitsu video. <laughs> uh, check out languagementoring.com. Languagementoring.com. And this is the website of Lydia, what's her full name? Lydia Makova, who is uh, a, a polyglot, which can't uh, a polyglot, and there where she speaks a lot of languages and she helps people learn languages and coaches people to learn foreign languages. She says, oh, she says she learns, she knows nine languages. She's a fan of the gold list method. So she very much likes using gold list as her vocabulary learning. And she's got a nice, uh, description of the gold list, a nice uh, a PDF, a, a little ebook free on her website. You can go to her website, languagementoring.com. And um, anyway, somewhere on here you, in her blog, you can find, uh, you can just enter your email and you can get the free ebook. I'm going to kind of review the ebook right now a little bit. So this is her ebook, and we're just going to discuss it because she's got a. It's a very nice, kind of simple description. She's got the gold list method in a nutshell. In a nutshell means uh, a short summary, right? In a simple way. So it's a more simple way. So here's what you do with the gold list method. It makes you make notebooks, right? So you make. Uh, lists, lists of vocabulary, right? You just put in a notebook, just kind of like I describe in, in my email, my free email course. And that first email you get from me about learning phrases, I, rec I recommend that you put the phrases in a notebook. You can just put them in a notebook and review them whenever. But this system, this gold list system is a much more organized. It's, it's, really, it's, it's, a, it's a real system, right? It's not just putting in a notebook and kind of look at it whenever. This is like a schedule and a very specific way to do it. And I haven't, you know, I'm just starting doing this, so I, I can't tell you if it works for me or not. But I will say this, I like it. I enjoy it. I, I find it very relaxing and uh, like no stress. Whereas, say, unk, and it's not boring for me. Like I, I enjoy the process of writing out the words and, or the phrases and... Uh, you know, finding the words in, in a book. I'm using one book right now that I'm using. Uh, so I like that. And it, it's, I find it just, a, a, it reminds me of sitting in a coffee shop and uh, just writing in a journal or something. 
Whereas Anki, for example, using apps, vocabulary flashcard apps, I find uh, sometimes a little stressful. They're coming quick and I can't remember things. And uh, But mostly I find them very boring and just not enjoyable. Too much. And it's also, it's always on a screen and I'm, I don't like looking at screens all the time. So how do we do it? Let's get into the details of how to do it. You get a notebook and a pen. That's all you need. A notebook and a pen. Low tech. <laughs> Low tech and super cheap. I like it. Here we go. Now, here's a nice little picture she has. If you're watching on video, if you can't see it on video, I'll try to describe it. Okay, so what you do is you've got in your notebook, you open your notebook up. And you're using, you know, when you open a notebook, you're looking at two pages, right? There's a page on the left and a page on the right. You're going to use both of those for each list. And she's divided it up in A, B, C, and D. It's nice visually. You can see it. I recommend if you are listening to the podcast right now, if you're only listening to the audio, I do recommend go to my YouTube channel and watch the video today because uh, you can actually, it, or 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 just go get her ebook. That's probably the be easier way. <laughs> get the ebook because it's, it's, it's nice to see a picture of this. It makes it a little simpler to understand. So basically, you've got uh, each page has f two sections. So there's four sections, right? You're using two pages of your notebook, and there's four sections, A, B, C, and D, okay? So what you do is you make your first list. They call it a head list, head, right? Top, top list, the, 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 the first list. And this is where you write new vocabulary, right new words or phrases like short phrases i think are the best two three words you don't have to do long long sentences uh but maybe like two three words isn't is plenty it gives you a little bit of grammar gives you some context like right you understand that there's more of a situation it's not just one word but um you can do one word too it's okay but uh but probably better to do phrases short phrases so each day if you want to do it daily you would make your list. You don't have to do it daily, but you can. Each list, ha you do 20 to 25. Just decide. Choose one of those and always do the same number. Okay? I'm doing 25. Okay? So each of my lists, every one of my lists has 25 vocab, new vocab items, lines. So in the A section, the top left, right? The left page at the top, you write your list starting, you know, each line you have one thing. So... You know, you put your first vocab word on line one and then line two and then line three and you fill it up until you get to 25. Or you could do shorter if you want. You could do 20, whatever. Let's just say 25. All right, so then you've done it. You write it out by hand. As you write it, you, you, you write in that section on the top left page, right? You write both the target language for you that's English you write the English and then you write the translation in your own language or if you're quite advanced you could even write the meaning in English if you wanted to but uh, translations are fine so you would write the see if I can show you mine I can't I guess mine's too hard to find right now okay so um, you do that you'll have 25 items right and each each line has the new vocab and then the, the, the meaning in that section. That's section A. What do you do next? So you have your 25 items. You fill it up. You just close the book or you can make a new list. You can turn the page and start again. If you, have, if you want to do 50 vocab uh, in one day, you could do that. Just take a break in between. Don't try to do all of it. It's, it's, you need to rest your brain a little bit. Just do like 20 minutes at a time and then take a little break. And you could do 20 more minutes. So you've got 25 lines. You fill up that top left section, right? The left page, top. And then you close it. And then what do you do with that list? You do nothing. You, never, you do not look at that list again until at least two weeks. You must wait two weeks. That's important part of this system. And, you know, I'll see if that helps or not. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't tried it myself yet. I haven't done this completely. But uh, if you want to really follow the system, what you need to do is do not look at it. The idea is that you're, you want to learn the vocab 
long term, like your long term memory, right? Not just like studying for a test the night before, that's short term memory, right? You study the night before, you take the test, you get an A, yay! And then two days later, you forget a lot of it, right? Because most of it was short term memory. Right? Like I was an expert at that in school. <laughs> that was my system in school. <laughs> it worked very well. Not so great for learning things long term, though. It's a good way to beat the system, but it's, uh, it's not great for actual learning. So you wait two weeks. You can wait longer. Two weeks is the minimum. So that's the good thing. There's no stress. You don't need to feel pressure. You don't, after two weeks, oh, I must review it. I must do it again. No, you can wait. You can wait three weeks if you want to. But anyway, after at least two weeks, you go back to that old list, right? And you look at it. You got 25 items. And now you have to put an X next to ideally one, uh, one third, 30% roughly, okay? So um, let's say, I don't know, let's say you're going to drop eight, okay? So you've got a list of 25 and you need to drop eight of them. What does that mean? It means you need to which you need to identify eight items that you you still remember. Hopefully, you might not, but in general, hopefully you will still remember after two weeks about thirty percent of the list. Okay, so if you have tw a list of twenty-five, eh, around eight, right, seven or eight of them, something like that. Don't, if you don't remember that many, it's fine. But the idea, what you're going to do is you're going to make a second list now. And if you're looking on video, you can see you go over to the, the page on the right, right? And the top right part of the page, you're going to make your second list. These are called distillations. Don't worry about that word. It's just your second list, okay? And, and your second list will be shorter. Okay, because you have to drop some of the ones that you know. If you don't know eight, if you can't remember eight, if you've forgotten almost everything, you still must choose eight to drop. So what, what do you, how do you choose it? You could just choose the eight that, are the, that you think are less useful, that you don't need to learn right now. You kind of probably see them again in a future, in a future reading or future audio, and you'll probably make put them into another list again in the future. So no need to stress about it. Just drop them. So you got to drop eight. Drop the eight that you know the best, or if you don't know them that well, then just drop the eight that you don't like, <laughs> don't need as much. So you make your new list, list B, right? List number two. And you're going to just copy again. You're going to handwrite again. So let's say, what is uh, 17? 17 items, okay? From that, set, you're going to, so you're going to look at the list, the big long list, your first list. And now you're choosing 17 of those. And you're going to write them all out again by hand, right? Making your second list at the top, this time at the top right of the page. And again, you'll write the vocab and the meaning. You write them out. Now you have a list of about 17. And what do you do next? Write them out slowly. Enjoy the process. There's no hurry. You don't need to try to memorize them with a lot of effort. Just write them out and say them out loud. Say them as you write them. That's also important. Say them and write them. Now you have your list number two. Close it again. Wait two weeks at least. Then you're going to make a third list. After two weeks or more, open it up again. Look at list number two or 17. And now, you, again, you must drop 30% of them. You've got to drop 30% of them. So I don't know. It could be five, six, something like that. You're going to drive five or, drop five or six of them and make a new list. Okay, let's say you drop five and you're going to make a, a list of 12 next. So now on the bottom right page, the bottom right, okay, the right page on the bottom, you'll make your third list. Again, same. These are the, still the same items from the first list, but you're just dropping the ones you know. So looking at list two, you choose five, let's say. You choose five that you know and can still... And remember, after two weeks, you remember them. You learn them now. They're in long-term memory. And you drop them. Or you choose some that you just don't... You think you don't need. They're less important. 
you make list number three. And now this list number three has 12 items. And you write them out again. Same thing, same thing. Write the word and then write the meaning. Close it. Wait two weeks or more. You get the idea, right? And then you're going to make list number four, which will be at the bottom of the left page. It's kind of going in a circle around your notebook, right? And again, you drop 30%. So what, what, what are we down to? 12. So you drop four of them. And now you got a list of eight. So that's how it works. And then you could continue on into a new notebook if you want to. You can read more about that. Or you could just do it four times and then and that's enough. That's for each list. So that's one list, right? That's just from your like day one. This list, you're going to basically, you're going to rewrite it. You're going to look at it again, you know, three more times. You write it the first time. Two weeks later, you write it again with, right, dropping some. Two weeks later, you write it again, dropping some more. And then two weeks later again, you, dr you write it again, dropping some more. So you are reviewing each time you're writing it. It's a review, but the reviews are quite, you know, have a long time in between, two weeks or more. And then if you want to follow the full system, you would then take from list number four, you'd put that in a new notebook, and then you would do the whole thing again, <laughs> right? And it would just, you just keep making it. And so you're get until you fully and totally learn everything. This is the idea. So that is the gold list method. If you would like to kind of see see examples of this more, you know, see how it works, then again, get the ebook here that Lydia made. It's quite nice. It really make kind of simplifies it, makes it um, e easy to understand. Okay, I'm going to close this now and we'll go back. All right, so that's it. Pretty, uh, you know, it's not so complicated. It's actually pretty simple. Okay. All right, so that is the vocab method. So, so now coming back to our challenge, I recommend that you have, uh, you know, we're focusing on conversation. So my recommendation is that you get three things that number one you need listening right because we need we need some audio and to, we need that input right listening and maybe some reading too if you want to but you need input so listening and or reading you can use my lessons you can use podcasts you can use whatever but you need somewhere to get more vocab grow your vocabulary it helps right and it helps your pronunciation everything like that number two you'll need you the main part of the challenge you need to talk to people that's the whole point of this challenge is we're really focusing on active vocabulary, right? Active meaning you can use it. You don't just hear it and understand it. You actually can say it and use it. So you you got to find some conversation partners. You can join our Gab group and talk to other Effortless English members and fans. Or you could pay for native speakers and talk to them. Or you could do language exchanges, but you must have people to talk to. And then number three, I recommend having some kind of vocab review system. So for me, what, have I, what will I be using for Japanese? I'm doing Japanese. You guys are doing English. Most of you are doing English. <laughs> uh, I think all of you. So for Japanese, I've got a few things I'll be listening to and reading. Okay. I, I don't need to do huge amounts because I'm still a beginner level of Japanese. So I will be using Link, L-I-N-G-Q. You, you all know I'm a big fan of Link and Steve Kaufman. So he's got a lot of, he's got Japanese mini stories over there so, you know, that are a little more advanced. My wife has some, I've already done those that are really super low beginner, like zero level. And then at the next level higher, I w would be the Link mini stories, which are kind of regular beginner. I'll be working through, I think he's got like 50 or 60 of them in link so there's a lot of vocab there i can learn and and there's audios and things i can listen to so that will be my listening and uh reading to get vocab and if i there's also there's lots of other stuff on link too that i can read and what i like about link is i can read in uh, i don't have to read kanji they have uh, i can read in kana or romaji like i can use roman letters or the simpler easier japanese reading systems so 
that's great for me because I'm not focused on kanji right now. I don't want. I'm not really caring about reading the actual Japanese characters. That's a whole different job for later. <laughs> so um, I've got plenty of things to listen to and read. And if I get bored with any of that, there's another one called Satori Reader I've used before for Japanese, which just has lots and lots of stories. Again, uh, they don't have romaji, but they do have kana, so which I can read slowly. Um, so they, and they have audio, so it's reading an audio. So you you know, reading an audio is to get all the vocab and 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 you need listening practice, obviously, because conversation involves listening and speaking both, obviously, right? So that's what I'll be using. You could use my VIP lessons, you could do audiobooks, you can read books, podcasts, anything you want, but you need that input. You gotta get input. That's where you get it. So what will I do? So let's say I'll go to link and I'll go through I also have some physical books I'm using. I'm going to show you. Like, I've got this one I like. I'm using This is the one I'm doing right now with the gold list. Is uh, this little picture dictionary. It's just really simple, but I like this because it's, it's everyday items. It's, this is stuff I want to talk about in Japanese. It's, uh, it's just like normal home life and family life vocab, right? Like, I, I don't care about talking about economics right now or politics or current events or anything like that. I don't care about that right now. I want to talk about my family, my kids, maybe my job, my hobbies, food. And so this little picture dictionary is really simple. And I like it's visual, right? It's got pictures of everything. And then it's got the vocab and little simple phrases in here. And for me, this is really good right now. Like, you know, it's just it's kind of you, you can find these in all, all, all languages. Like here's one that just has transportation and it's just got... Pictures of, you know, buses and cars and trucks and how to say them in Japanese. Perfect. I think you probably are at a higher level of, in English than I am in Japanese. So for you, you might use easy novels, easy stories. Or if you're more advanced, you could use things that are more difficult. So you need input. Number two, find your conversation partners. Somehow you got to talk to people. I'm using italki for this challenge in Japanese. In fact, I start tomorrow. My first italki chat in Japanese is tomorrow. Uh, it probably is going to be difficult. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> and, uh, and then three, vocab review. I will be using the gold list method for vocab review. So you can tell me what you'll be doing. Let's get into our live chat now. And let's get see what you guys are doing. Okay. All King King says, give me advice. Which course should I start? Original or Power English first? It's just a level difference. The original course is probably middle intermediate. Uh, maybe low intermediate, actually. And uh, Power English is more middle to high intermediate. So Power English is a more, is a higher level course. So it's really up to you if you feel that your level, your listening ability, especially if, if you feel it's lower could start with original and if you feel like you're kind of right middle intermediate level or even a little higher you could start with power english and if you feel like you're a little higher than that you could do a vip program uh ivan or ivan de toronto ivan f from toronto oh is sending me in spanish uh, i'll just translate he says uh you speak very well. Thanks for your podcast. Uh, greetings from Canada. Thank you. Okay, this is interesting. Epic Gamer Boy says, I made a lot of American friends from PUBG Mobile. Don't know what that is, but there you go. That's good. S uh, was it Syed? I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, says, hi, it's wonderful information. I'm from India. Hello to India. Oh, here's Ibrahim Ali. He says, when are you going to interview Benny? I'll probably wait till I finish the challenge. Benny Lewis. Um, I'm looking forward to this interview. I never thought that you would agree with speaking a language from, from day one. You're open-minded, AJ. It's great to try something new. Yeah, this is a very good point. <laughs> you have to be open-minded in life. And, uh, you know, you... It requires some humility to realize that sometimes you have a strong belief about something. But if you're open to life, 
and your own ex and experience. You're, you have to be open that, you know, maybe that belief is some of my beliefs are wrong. I've had this experience in life many times. Probably the biggest one in my life was children. Because when I was younger, I thought, oh, no, children, children be difficult. Children, oh, I'm not going to have children. I'm never going to have children. No, no, no. You know, all this kind of negative I beliefs about it. And what an idiot I was. I was stupid. It was a stupid belief. It was totally and completely wrong. Now that, you know, obviously I changed my mind. And uh, my children are like just my children and my wife, obviously my family are the best thing about my life. And having children was the best decision I ever had in my life and the best thing I ever did. Um, and, you know, thank God, literally thank God that I woke up and changed that belief. So when it comes to language learning, right, uh, I was strongly influenced by um, AUA and the idea of a long silent period. AUA is automatic, I mean, a ALG, automatic language growth. AUA is the place, the school where they do it in Thailand. This is, I was getting my master's degree in uh, teaching English as a foreign language. And I was there, and as part of doing that, I did research at um, at AUA in their in their program, their Thai language program. And as part of my research, I became a student, and I did like 600 hours there in Thai. And their system is uh, quite famous, quite extreme, <laughs> I would say. That focused, they're very, very, very strongly on listen first and do not speak the language. And their rule is don't speak at all. Don't speak Thai. Right? They're teaching Thai. So they're, they say don't speak Thai until you listen 2,000 hours. So this is called a silent period, a silent period. The idea is that if you start speaking sooner, then you will create bad pronunciation habits. And in Thai, pronunciation is super important because it changes the meaning, just like uh, Mandarin or Cantonese. It's a tonal language. So if you make a little mistake with your pronunciation, it can make your speaking hard to understand or impossible to understand. And so they, you know, and I believe them. I, I totally believe what they say, that, that as a result of that long, long, long silent listening period, that their students who follow this end up having much better pronunciation and they speak in a very natural way. It all sounds great. It fits with Dr. Krashen's research. So as a teacher and all this, I was very strongly influenced by this. And, uh, and I still think it's a valid method for some people, for many people. It's totally fine. I'm not saying don't do it. But I, and, and, and I think also me, it depends on the situation. Like I did a, I kind of followed that with Spanish and uh, for a while at least, but not 2,000 hours. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Like I, for Spanish though, I did probably several hundred hours of listening. And then, but then I started doing speaking before I went to Spain. The problem I, see, I think now is that, so I've tried doing this with Japanese and it's not working for me. By not working, what I mean is that I get too bored and I just quit and stop by just listening, listening, listening passively. And it's a little crazy. Like I was in Thailand. I was in Thailand, living in Thailand and avoiding speaking Thai because I was trying to follow the rules. And, you know, I was part, it was part of my master's degree. So, was, you know, I was trying to follow the rules because I really wanted the experience. But, you know, 600 hours of listening to Thai and I had Thai friends several Thai friends and they would they they none of them could understand like AJ why I, I know you understand what I'm saying why don't you speak Thai no no I'm not supposed to speak <laughs> it's just crazy I look back and I'm like that was crazy I should why, why you know I would talk to taxi drivers when I, when I really had to I would use it but I but I really tried to avoid speaking Thai when I was there and I look back and I'm like oh, what a missed opportunity that was it, it's kind of crazy when, when you think about it if I was going to stay there 10 years and just go to AUA all day, maybe it would have been okay to do 2,000 hours and wait. But I've been trying that with Japanese just and it has killed my motivation. 
because I just get so bored just listening. It's great for a while listening to, to things is fine, but I live in Japan, so I want to talk to people. That's what I want to do. I don't like media. This is the problem. I don't like television. I don't like movies generally in English. I don't watch many movies in English anymore. I don't watch TV in English anymore. Uh, I read some books, but um, on topics that I can't read in Japanese, not even close. Japanese reading is so difficult for me, and there's no way I can read at that level. So I have to read baby books, and I get bored reading baby books. I don't want to read baby books in Spanish. I don't want to read baby books in Japanese. I don't want to read them in English, except to my babies, <laughs> right? So I think Benny has a guy. I'm really open to this idea now. I've changed my mind. I used to be totally the opposite extreme, but I'm... I'm thinking that Benny's method is probably very good for many, many people. I won't see everyone. And maybe there's a middle ground, right? That you maybe you do like a hundred hours or a couple hundred hours of listening. You just you do a bunch of listening and wait and then speak. Or you just do both at the same time. That's what really Benny is teaching, is that he doesn't say don't listen. He doesn't say don't read. Quite the opposite. He's just saying dive in and do everything. Don't wait. Just dive in, jump in. Fully, completely, listen as much as you can, talk as much as you can, read as much as you can. I guess writing, writing's, if you focused on writing, that's fine. If you don't care about writing, not that one's not so necessary until later or ever. But uh, I am, I'm very open to it. The other thing that changed my mind is jujitsu, doing jujitsu, because uh, jujitsu is also very, very, very tough. Very, very, very difficult thing that requires years and years and years and years and years of practicing. And uh, it's physically painful. Like right now, I got a little knee injury. <laughs> um, and uncomfortable. And for two years, I, tell, you know, I keep saying this as a white belt. I was just getting, getting beat up on all the time, right? <laughs> uh, and so I thought, well, why don't... I didn't quit jujitsu though. My motivation stayed very high, even when I was no good. What's the difference? Like, so I kept thinking, like, why? Why I quit Japanese and get bored instantly? Like, just after a few months, I get bored after a very short time. Oh, I don't want to listen to this that stuff anymore. And I realized the difference is that in jujitsu, I'm sparring. I'm sparring. That's like doing conversation. I'm I'm doing the real thing. I'm fighting and losing and winning. And now I want to study techniques and learn those techniques because I can use them in the real thing, right? The real fights. And I think there's a very strong connection to that with language, where without the conversation, it's hard to stay motivated, at least for me, because that's the real world thing. Most of us, a real world thing we want to do is talk to people. You want to talk to people in English, right? I mean, you probably also want to listen to movies and read books and things like that, of course. But, you know, I think most of you want to speak to people in English, real people conversations right and that's what i want to do in japanese i, I don't care about japanese media uh, at all <laughs> um but i very much want to talk to people so without the talking to people everything else becomes boring but talking to people now i'm motivated motivated to do the gold list now i'm motivated to read now i'm motivated to listen because i know everything i learn i can use in a real conversation or try to use probably fail a lot, but that's the same in jujitsu. I learn new techniques. I try them in sparring and fighting. Usually I fail. What happens? Then I go, ah, oh, what happened? I go back. I learn it some more. Re review it again and then try again. So I think Benny's a lot right about this, that by diving in, you, you, you're instantly doing the real thing. You're not waiting. So I think that, I don't know, maybe it, maybe that's not the perfect method for language learning, like if we studied it, because we know children don't do that. Children do have a silent period uh, when they're babies and they're just listening, listening, listening. But on the other hand, I think for adults, motivation is the biggest problem, not method, right? As a teacher, I always focused on method for a while, for the first several years of doing effortless English. But now I'm really on the other side and i really think that motivation is number one methods are important but motivation is more important and so if doing a talking to people even on the first day 
uh, gives you extra motivation, you know, motivates you. Even if it's just motivation, but because you're struggling, like, ah, this sucks. I can't say anything. I need more vocabulary. Then you're going to want to, then you will want to read more. You'll want to listen. And then you go back and you try again in a conversation, right? So, yeah, you got to be willing to change your mind and you got to be willing to try new things in life, even after many years. Uh, stay open, stay open, keep your mind open. So I'm going to try a quite different approach and let's see how it goes. All righty, let's get into our questions again. Sorry. Paulo Jose says, uh, you're the best teacher in the world, the best pronunciation. I really understand you. Thank you. You have to watch anime, says Motep. Eh, I like some anime. I like Miyazaki type stuff. I like it. But do I want to study it? Not really. <laughs> um, yeah. Good morning from Russia. It says Arib. And I'm sorry, I can't read your first name. Um, hello to Russia. Ah, Pachu Yadav says, what is a graded reader? How is it good for beginners? Let's see if I can give an example. A graded reader, I'll just tell you what it is, is a simple version of a book, an easier version. For example, let's say you had okay, Lord of the Rings by Tolkien, right? Everyone knows that bo those books. So Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. Probably quite difficult for you to read if you're intermediate level. Okay, there's a lot of his writing style, his sentences are a bit, you know, a bit long, the vocabulary he uses. It could be very difficult for you to read the real books right now. Maybe not, but if you're lower level, it would be very difficult. So what can you do? Well, sometimes they have simple, easier versions of the same book. You might find a graded reader for Lord of the Rings. So it's the same story. It tells the same story, the same characters, but using easier vocabulary, using easier, shorter sentences. So you read the Lord of the Rings story, but it's not the main, it's not the real book Tolkien wrote. It's a simple book, a simple version somebody else wrote. I don't know if they actually have one for Lord of the Rings, but they do have a lot of them uh, that are in lots of different languages, right? So I read a lot of those in Spanish. Um, and they have different levels, which is great too. So you might they might have, you know, level one graded readers using only 300 words of vocabulary, kind of like just common, easy vocab. And then level two, maybe it's 500 words of vocabulary and then a thousand, right? And they, they may have like five, six, seven levels uh, with lots of different stories and the stories are pretty good. They're, they're, they're pretty good. Um, it's interesting. It's, 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 I think for adults, it's more interesting than trying to read a baby book, right? Like I said, I like reading baby books to my children, but I don't really want to read them for myself. Okay. Uh, so I think the graded readers are easier, right? Like for example, if you're doing Spanish, Don Quixote, you, you might want to read Don Quixote, but reading the I've tried, started trying to read Don Quixote, the original, and it's tough for me. It's it's kind of tough. It's too hot. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot of words in there I don't know. It's, I find it difficult. So, but I could maybe find a graded reader version of it, right? And try that first. And there's a lot of them in English. You could find a lot of them. Oh, and then, oh, to finish with Ibrahim's comment about Benny, uh, I haven't, I've never talked to Benny before or, or communicated with him directly at all. But, uh, so, but, uh, but I do intend at the end of my Japanese challenge you, with him, because I'm joining him, his, he has a whole coaching system for learning other languages and I'm just joining it. it mine, so my challenge with him actually starts uh, Monday. <laughs> I'm starting in a month earlier than you guys are with me. So, uh, so anyway, I, my intention is to do the whole thing. So then I could actually talk to him about my experience uh, in the interview. So we'll see. I hope hopefully he'll say yes. That'd be nice. 
he's really good, very enthusiastic, very encouraging. I really like his uh, style of coaching. It's very, very good. How to prepare for DET. I don't know what DET is. <laughs> Sorry. And don't spam the comments, please. Type your comment one time. All right. Should I? Okay, Olga Sergi Sergivna says, should I learn many phrasal verbs or is it good enough to know simple language? You learn, certainly learn phrasal verbs because we it's an important part of English, but um, you don't need to memorize like lists of phrasal verbs. I think will be would become confusing. I would just say as you find them, right? You when you're reading, when you're listening, you're gonna hear phrasal verbs. So as you do that, put them in your notebook. You could use the gold list method, right? So you just as you see it and learn it, okay, you just write it out, right? There's a good one. Write, write it out. So write out something. There's a phrasal verb for you. Okay, you write it. You write it, and then you write the meaning and learn them. Just you know, one by one, as you find them in books, in listening. I think that would be that's a better way to do it than getting a list of phrasal verbs, some book that has a thousand phrasal verbs, and trying to memorize them in a big long list with no context. Right. I think that just learn them as you go. It's, it's, it's low stress. Olga says, I'm still doing my 365 day challenge. Huge improvements. That's awesome. I hope you'll join the next one too. Hi from Brazil, says Alan Reyes. Hello to Brazil. Do I know Uzbekistan? I certainly know of the country. Yes. All right, let's see. Amina says, when we learn new vocab, we immediately use them in speaking constantly so we'll not forget them. Yep, if you if you can do that, certainly, right? Trying to active it. Right? We have passive vocab, we hear it, we understand it. But then we have active vocab. We can actually use it when we speak. Like my passive, because I focus so much on listening, uh, even with Japanese, like I have when we did our listening um challenge a couple of years ago, I did I, I was counting all my hours in Japanese. So I have about five hundred something hours of listening in Japanese pretty which is a good amount pretty good that's almost the, and probably just living here I've heard enough I'm probably a pretty close to what my Thai level was so my active vocab in Japanese is certainly I mean my my passive right just just listening only is definitely better my active vocab though because I haven't been speaking much sucks <laughs> it's terrible if in fact go on Gab, you can see me speaking Japanese. Go to our um, uh, Gab group. I put my day zero video there. Uh, that I, I recorded it for Benny's group, but I put it there for you guys to see also. Why? I want you to see how bad I am, <laughs> so you don't feel nervous. Because I want you to do that with English. I want you to put your uh, make a video for yourself speaking English, and you're gonna do it do do it at the beginning before our challenge. And share it with everybody on the list. Just record it unlisted, okay? Put it, You can put it on, make a YouTube channel for yourself. When you uh, do your video, just mark, put it unlisted, unlisted. That means nobody can find it if they, unless they have the link, right? It's not public to everybody. But anyway, go. you can go see me speaking Japanese very badly. <laughs> um, but I just want you to see that, okay, look, don't, don't feel nervous if your speaking's not good. I guarantee your English speaking is better than my Japanese. 100% it's better. Because you're listening to me now. I could not listen to a podcast in Japanese for an hour at this level and understand it. No way. So definitely your English is better than my Japanese. So don't feel bad. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes. It doesn't matter if you're, you're not very fluent. Just do it. Just doesn't matter. We're all learning. Just focus on improving. Hello, good morning. I'm from Thailand. Hello. Swati Krupp. Oh, okay. Well, this is good to know. Pablo uh, Pinheiro says, I'm, Spani I'm a Spanish native speaker and Don Quixote is tough also for us. Thanks. <laughs> I'm glad to know that because I started reading it. And I was like, 
was like, oh, God, this is difficult. <laughs> there was so many, so much vocab. And I don't know, like he says, we need to read carefully the first two or three chapters in order to enter into Cervantes language. It's not surprising because it's, you know, I imagine it's an older style, quite formal and older style of Spanish. It'd be like trying to read, uh, I don't remember Cervantes, what his time period is exactly. But, you know, people try to read Shakespeare or even even Thoreau, who's who's not so old, American, so 1860s, 1850s. Uh, people try to read Thoreau in English and find it very tough. And it, indeed, Americans, many American native speakers will try to read Thoreau and find it tough. So anyway, it's it's good to hear <laughs> that it's not just me. Uh, Ibrahim asks, Ibrahim Ali again, is Benny's method for everybody? I wonder how beginner speaking from day one. I think it's a bit stressful. I'm sure he's got a point because I haven't tried it. I would say no. I would I'd say no. There's no method that's for everybody. That that would be my opinion. I think it it depends. And I would base this like on jujitsu again. So I remember I, I mentioned sparring in jujitsu, right? That fighting where you're really fighting, right? within the rules of jiu-jitsu. And there's, uh, people disagree. When should new students, when should people start sparring, right? Because when jiu-jitsu, there's technique where you're practicing slowly and carefully. There's no stress. The other guy is, you know, helping you learn. Uh, and then there's sparring. The other guy's trying to beat you, okay? Uh, it's, and it's fast, fast, fast. Everything's happening very, very fast. It's very difficult. So some people say start sparring day one, but, and that's what I did my very first day of jujitsu. <laughs> and it's a strong memory in my mind. I did sparring against a purple belt and he, yeah, he kicked my butt like crazy. And, uh, people have different reactions to that. That's what happens to everybody as a white belt. You know, unless they're some super athlete. But to normal people as a white belt, if they the first time sparring, especially if they do it day one, their very first day, what happens is some higher belt, like a blue belt or a purple belt, will just kick your butt, okay? Just like destroy you. <laughs> and uh, again and again, and you're just tapping, 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 tapping. Or, you're, or if they're nice to you, they won't tap you. They'll just hold you down and you can't move and you can't move and you try to get out and you can't escape. And you're helpless. So there are kind of two reactions people have to that feeling. And especially when it, if it happens again, you go back your second day, it happens again, your third day, your first month, six months. <laughs> um, so what are the, the reactions? Some people get very, very stressed out about that and frustrated and they quit. Lots of people quit. Or they get very, very, very motivated by it, which is what happened with me. I was motivated. I thought, oh, this is cool, these little guys, because I'm in Japan, so um, I'm above average in Japan. I'm not huge, but in America, I'm average maybe even a little below average size for Americans now. But uh, in Japan, I'm above average. So guys smaller than me were beating me, beating me, and still do. Um, but they were beating me easily. <laughs> and uh, I just thought, wow, this this Brazilian jiu-jitsu works, man. It's There's something about this. It's, it's amazing. So I, I just, I want to keep doing it. And uh, it was very motivating for me. So this is the question, right? Like, uh, so people have different ideas, like maybe wait three months, maybe wait six months. Maybe beginners should wait until they know some techniques really well, then do the sparring. And then other people say, no, no, just jump in day one. I think it's the same with language speaking, that it, it depends on kind of your personality and your situation. And I think that... Yes, for a lot of people, Benny's method is good. I think for me, I'm changing my mind for myself. I think it's probably a better method for me. Because uh, with my personality, I think that it works better. Right, just like jujitsu. I'm glad I, I'm really happy I, that I was kind of in the old system at my gym. And then I started sparring the first day. Even though it was very hard, it kept me motivated and interested. I found the challenge very, very 
exciting. My problem is boredom. That's why I quit things. <laughs> I, I, I get bored. I, I don't quit things because they're difficult. I get quit things because they're boring. If I get bored. So for me, sparring day one was perfect. But for someone else, I've seen other guys come in. They're really, really shy. And uh, maybe they never did any fighting before. And they're maybe kind of small. And sparring day one is just too much for them. And they're going to quit. And the different system works better for them. So I think you have to find, you can try these different things and you have to find what works. And what works is what keeps you motivated, what keeps you happy and excited doing English. If starting immediately and speaking as much as you can immediately, if that, if you like that, you like that challenge, it's exciting. It's, of course, it's difficult and stressful, but if it's also exciting and interesting to you, then you should do that. If it's so stressful you want to quit, and that you do quit, well then, wait and just focus on reading and listening for a long time and build up your comfort, you know? <laughs> and then I, I, I think that they both work if you keep going. The problem is quitting. The problem is quitting. That's, what, that's, why, that's how we really fail is we quit. <laughs> so whatever you need to do to avoid quitting is, uh, is the answer. It's my answer. Hello from Yemen. Okay, here's another example. Uh, Trehukis, Trehukis says, I tried to read the Da Vinci Code, a novel, a few months ago and I couldn't. Right, okay, so there you go. You tried to read a full adult novel in English and you're like, ah, oh, too much. It's too difficult. That's totally fine course right that's normal so you just need to find in easier things to read first you might start with graded readers and you just got to find the right level probably level one would be way too easy for you so maybe some of the more advanced graded readers or you know some other books that are not quite as difficult as da vinci code don't worry you can come back and try da vinci code later Brazil. Okay, a few more. Let's see. Okay, Carlos Augusto says, I like your voice so much. That's why I can listen to you for hours. The way you speak is so clear. Uh, indeed, that's important when you're listening and you're listening lots of hours. You want to like the person and their voice. <laughs> yeah, good point. Very important. Very important. <laughs> Ibrahim says, Ibrahim Ali says, I love hearing your jujitsu stories. You're very passionate about it. Yeah, I am. I'm way more passionate about jujitsu than uh, languages. <laughs> I love it. I love jujitsu. It's tough. I've had to miss two training days. I missed Thursday and I'm missing today also. My knee, I hurt my knee a little bit. Yeah, we're practicing throws, like kind of like judo throws, you know? And uh, I think I landed a little weird on my knee and it, Got some pain in my one of my knees, and uh, yeah, I think I find it's better to be careful and uh, just be sure it's I it'll give it more time to heal. Because if I go back and I try to train and it's hurt, then there, I might hurt it again, and then I'm out for a long, long time. I don't want that, so it's hard to skip a couple of days, but I'm doing it. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm back training uh, next week. It's it's a mine. It's not a serious injury. It's kind of minor. 
Hi, Jay. Oh, Dallar Faisoff says, hi, I'm a Steve Kaufman kind of person. Yeah, indeed. And see, Steve Kaufman also is fantastic and obviously does very well. And, you know, Steve Moore and, but see, Steve loves, loves, loves reading and listening. And uh, he tends to, I think, focus from what I've heard and, and when I've talked to him, you know, he, he jumps in and he's into audio books and, uh, and reading, you know, full books and radio programs. He loves jumping in and doing all that, uh, which is great. Like I can see this, it also depends on your level, right? So in Spanish, I much more enjoy reading and listening uh, passively because my, my level's higher and uh, I can actually read things that are interesting. I can understand things that are interesting to me. It's that beginner level where the, the material, the content can be very boring that I struggle with. And I'm still in that. It's hard to get past that. Um, <laughs> right? Intermediate. It's, it's interesting. People, you know, a lot of people talk about intermediate and that people quit at the intermediate level because they feel like they're not, you know, learning as fast. But for me, the beginner levels are always, have always been much more difficult. Anything, learning guitar, learning jujitsu. It's the beginner level where I, I where I can't do anything, and I, that's where I get tend to get very bored. If I can reach the intermediate level, then I find them, I'm, my motivation goes up a lot. Like in jujitsu, my motivation is higher now as a blue belt, kind of high beginner, I guess you could say, uh, much higher than when I was a white belt. Because the white belt, there's a lot of frustration. <laughs> um, as a blue belt, now I'm. I know enough where it's really becoming very fun, really fun, and I got a long way to go. But uh, anyway, Olga Sergivina says, "Do you know John Danaher personally?" No, I wish. <laughs> it would be great if you could interview him. John Danaher is a very famous, perhaps the number one jujitsu coach in the world right now. John Danaher. He coaches Gary Tonin, Gordon Ryan. Um, some other famous guys so he's a really good coach no I'm, i no, i don't know him personally i just i just watch his videos if you uh if you do jiu-jitsu brazilian jiu-jitsu then uh he's got a good instagram channel actually john Denner. very interesting Okay, a couple more, and then I'm going to go play with my babies. Uh, Wally Mora says, thank you, AJ. You helped me a lot. You don't even know about it. Well, thank you. Faras K. Rakade says, uh, hi, greetings from Somalia. You're my best teacher. Thanks for that. Well, thank you. Uh, Elias Gomez says, Hi, I love your content. And I have your book as well. Helped a lot during my process of learning English and mostly with my speaking. Great. Ahmed Mustafa says, Is it okay to listen to different types of accents? Yeah. Or will that be bad and make my pronunciation bad? No, it's totally fine. Totally fine. You can listen to American and British and Australian. You can mix them. It's totally fine. It's not a problem. Will, will you occasionally like mix them when you speak? Maybe, but as long as you listen, just listen to the standard accents. Right? This is what I always say, the standard, the most common accent in for each country, right? There's a standard American accent. That's how, that's what I speak. It's the, the most common uh, American accent in the United States is how I speak. People call it the Midwest accent or different names you'll hear. But, you know, essentially the Midwest, the West, it's all this is what you're going to hear. Most people. Then there are, of course, other accents like Southern and New York and Boston. But uh, just focus on the standard. There's a kind of more of a standard, you know, Queens English <laughs> uh, that the British use. Right. That BBC type accent. Again, you don't want to be speaking Cockney or, or one of the more uh the smaller more specialized uh, specialized is not really the right word but 
the 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 less common accents, right? And again, there's a, there's kind of a probably a a standard Australian accent. That's the ones you're going to hear on TV the most. Those are tend to be very clear. Like I can easily understand British standard British. I can easily understand standard Australian. Those common accents, right? Like Hugh Grant <laughs> for the British accent, for example, the English accent. Um, so if you focus on those, it doesn't matter if maybe you pronounce one word a little bit more American and you pronounce another one a little more British and another one a little more Australian. As long as it's those main standard accents, everyone will understand you just fine. Paolo just gave a, a super chat donation. Thank you so much. It's very nice. Thank you. Strong power. I've been listening to your podcast for two years, and I... Oh, is this a question? Can I pass any difficulties if I do a grammar test? I don't know. Try it. <laughs> do a grammar test. <laughs> Tell me what you think. Ibrahim Ali says, You're right, AJ. The beginner level is a bit boring. It's hard to find interesting content. Steve recommended that we shouldn't stick with beginner materials for a long time. Yeah, Steve's right. He's right about that because uh, they, they're boring. <laughs> this is the problem. Some people have less a problem with that. Like some people, stress is more of a problem, right? That uh, So they, they like things to be much easier for a long time and they can do that. They don't get so bored because it's nice and relaxed. And then other people, like more like, this is me, people get bored too easily. And so things that are a little more challenging, it can't be too challenging because then that's also boring because you understand nothing. But um, in general, I agree. I, I don't like the beginner levels of anything um, very much. I'm, I'm enjoying jujitsu so much more now that I'm out of the white belt level. So much more fun. Uh, it was still fun as a white belt, but it's way more fun now. Um, yeah. Oh, cool. Paulo says, uh, I'm from Brazil. I've been listening to you since 2006, from the beginning. You helped me a lot. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you, and thanks for staying with me this whole time. Wow. That's when I started Effortless English, 2006. Amazing. <laughs> And then Paolo Jose says, hey, have you ever seen Brazil? Not yet. I have not been to Brazil yet, but I'd love to. I'd love to. I think it would be cool to go to Brazil and do a little kite surfing, which I've done in the past, and uh, and, and train some jujitsu there. That'd be cool. It'd be fun. Oh, hey, Julia Taquita. Thank you for the donation as well. Hey, Julia. Good to see you as always. Okay, I'll do a few more. Uh, okay, Mohammed Elpop says, I want to ask... Your program is more focused on physiology related to body movements and emotions, right? Why don't you use these techniques with languages and speak five or 10 languages? Because <laughs> I'm not interested in five or 10 languages. Um, some people, you know, polyglots, poly meaning many, glot, language, many languages. Um, people kind of do languages as a hobby, you know, like people like Lydia that I just mentioned today. She's... And, and they clearly just, and Steve Kaufman, another one, and Benny Lewis, and they just love the, you know, like for them, languages are like jujitsu for me. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not just uh, they're doing it because they need it for something. They just love learning languages, speaking languages. It's just this fun, enjoyable hobby or passion they have. And, you know, honestly, languages have never been that for me. <laughs> I, uh, I learned Spanish for practical reasons because I wanted to go and uh, travel in Spain. And as soon as my trip was over, I stopped doing it. I'm in Japan now, living in Japan. So now I have some very practical reasons for Japanese. 
and that's why I'm focusing on Japanese. But will I start learning, uh, I don't know, Romanian? Probably not, unless I have a reason to go travel to Romania or something. You know, it's just, uh, and maybe I'll change. We'll see. I think you all got to keep your mind open. Um, maybe I'll change and uh, start enjoying it more and just do it as a hobby and for fun. But I tend to use these, you know, you mentioned the psychological message and physiology. I do use those methods, but I just use them like for me, jujitsu. Uh, the way Steve Kaufman feels about language or Benny Lewis or Lydia. Uh, I, sorry, I, don't, I forgot her last name. Anyway, I just, I just closed the, anyway, <laughs> um, the way they feel about languages, I feel about jujitsu. I'm just passionate about it. I love it, love it, love it. I mean, every night I watch jujitsu ju ju videos. That's what I do every single night. My kids go to bed and I turn on the jujitsu videos. Like right now in my tab, in my browser, I usually have about five different jujitsu videos open. Right now I've got three open right now. Here's one on leg locks. <laughs> here's one on escapes from side control, if you know what that is. And here's one on just general, some general kind of wrestling ideas. So I've got these in my browser. I've got three, four, five, six <laughs> different jujitsu videos open all, you know, every day, every night. And I'm go, I'll watch one and then I'll jump to the other one, jump to the other one, take a little break, come back. Da -da -da -da. Crazy about it. I love it. I love it. So it's all about what you love. And that's where, why I say the motivation makes a big difference. And if you need it, some of you need, need, need English. You know, English is it's a different situation with English because it is such an international language. And so for, uh, for school, for business, for travel, and many other things, English is, has so many uh, practical uses and benefits that a lot of people learn English who don't care about learning a lot of languages, right? They just, they need English for because it's practical. And so that's why many of you are learning English and you don't care about learning 10 languages. And I'm kind of like that. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm focused on Japanese and, and I'll be, because I live here. After Japanese, will I learn a bunch of other languages? Eh, we'll see, but probably not unless I'm going to take it, unless I'm going to travel. And then I probably would. Right now, travel is not so easy for different reasons, including just that I have two small children. So we'll see. We'll see. You know, we all have, that's why there's not one, one exact formula that every month follows, right? It's, you, got, you must adapt to your own needs, your own personality. This is what's great about independent learning, right? We're not all the same. So we're not, we don't all just sit in a class and do exactly the same thing, right? You can, if you love reading, you can do a lot more reading. If you prefer just talking to people, you can do a lot more of that. You can change the balance of your activities to fit your style, your personality, what motivates you, what you enjoy, and that's great. Oh, DET, Satef says, DET is a Duolingo English test, how to prepare for it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, do you need it? I would just say just do, you know, all the things I say. Do lots of reading. Do lots of uh, listening, huge amount of listening. Chat in English when you can. And then just take the test, see what happens. That's what I would say. Don't, don't focus too much on tests. I don't think those kind of tests are... I mean, I don't know. Maybe some people get motivated by them. But for me, they... They tend to just stress, make people stressed, and they take they take your focus away from the real language. All right, I'm gonna. Oh, Paulo says only here to be grateful. Thanks a lot. You're a top. Thank you, Paulo. Uh, is it okay? Is it Secato? Enrique Secato. I'm sorry. I'm probably mispronouncing your last name. Sorry about that. But yeah, thank you so much, Paulo. It's great. It's great to see you, and thank you again, Taquita. Julia Taquita, thanks a lot for everything, dear AJ, says Julia. Julia Taquita. Do I speak any words of Portuguese? No, I don't. Okay. Okay, I'll do one more. Mm 
I'm just reading through here. One second, guys. Yes, I've heard of Uzbekistan, of course. Okay. All right, okay, this will be the last one. Um, where is it? Oh, is it Saleh? It says, uh, no, 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 where is I just, ah, I lost it. It's moving. Oh, here we go. Red Mundo, Red World. Grammar is easy for me. I like it a lot. But listening comprehension was always my main problem. I'd like to solve it. Greetings from uh, Chorios, Peru. Well, okay. Well, great. Well, you're you're uh, you're a minority. <laughs> Good for you. Most people don't like grammar, uh, studying it. So that's awesome that you like it. But. You need to focus on listening. So, okay, so that's the good news. You're listening right now to me. I've been talking an hour and 15 minutes. Impressive. Very, very, very good. Try to listen an hour a day or more. And the key thing, as I said, is finding things to listen to that you like, that are interesting and understandable. And those are connected. If it's not understandable, it can't be interesting. So mostly understandable. Not not a hundred percent, maybe you know ninety eighty percent, and interesting to you. If you love my podcast and enjoy it, listen to my podcast every day. Great, you know I've got a lot of old ones too. You can go through my whole YouTube channel, my whole podcast channel, hundreds of them. <laughs> so that'll keep you busy every day. You can find audio books if you like that. You can find other podcasts. Um, of course, there are my lessons, VIP lessons, Power English course. There's a there's a huge amount of things you can listen to. The main thing is to be sure you're uh, that you're interested and therefore that you're listening actively. So that's another thing. This is a key point with listening. Uh, I know that some people say, "Oh, it's fine to just you know have." listening in the background kind of very very passive um and i guess that's better than nothing but it's not very good so when i say listening i mean you're concentrating you're focusing you're really you know your attention is focused on the audio right i don't mean you're you're um you know watching television and then there's in your own language and there's english playing in the background or you're you're doing work on the computer and there's some english playing in the background that you're not really listening to not that it's fine you can do you can go for a walk you can do something physical you could wash the dishes something like that but your mind is you know focused on that audio you're really listening to it and hearing it and paying attention so that's what I mean when I say listening, right? I don't mean you're you're just like your mind is blank. You're not really focused, right? Because uh, people or people will say, "Oh, can I listen when I sleep?" And th- th- will I will it benefit? I, I don't think so. <laughs> In my experience, no. Maybe some tiny, tiny, tiny amount, but not really. It's not nothing you're gonna nothing you will notice. Okay, so focused listening is what I mean when I say listening. Okay, focused listening, really paying attention and concentrating. So just be sure to do that and try to do it an hour a day. Two hours a day would be even better if you want to focus on listening. And we've had a lot, a lot, a lot of members who have had great success, great success, focusing mostly on listening for about two hours a day. I encourage you to do that. Okay, guys, lots of love to you. What about Ibrahim? Are you still in Egypt? Oh, yeah, the guys are saying hi to each other. Okay, good. I'll be back with another show soon. What I encourage you to do, if you want to join our challenge, remember our challenge, our challenge, my challenge in Japanese starts Monday. <laughs> so I'll share with you how it's going. And I'm doing that again with Benny Lewis, fluent in three months. If you want to check out his website, uh, I think it's too late to join his challenge this time but if you're learning another language especially if you're learning something another language not english you're trying to do some other language people always ask me i'm i want to learn you know chinese what should i do join benny's challenge try that 
do Chinese. Uh, but anyway, the, his, I think it's, this one's closed, so you might have to wait. I don't know when he's going to do the next one. But uh, anyway, I'll, t I'll give you updates how I'm doing. But then our English challenge, our next one, we've done several over the last few years. But our next one's a conversation challenge. It starts April 20th. I'm looking at my calendar right now. I wrote it down. April 20th, that's a Wednesday. What to do before the challenge? You need to find your conversation partners. Join our Gab group. Join the Gab group and say hello. If you want, you can make your like your first video already, right? Because you're going to do a pre-video, a start video before we do the challenge, right? The very beginning. My, I already put mine in Japanese on the site, on Gab. You can see me speaking bad Japanese, <laughs> okay? Uh, put yours in English. Uh, for your video, just talk like uh, two minutes or less, okay? Don't no, Nothing long, just two minutes or less. Make mistakes. Bad pronunciation's okay. Very, very slow is okay. You forget a lot of words, okay. Doesn't matter, okay? You'll still be better than my Japanese, <laughs> okay? So no worries. Get on that Gab group right there on the screen I'm pointing, gab.com, AJ Hogue, follow me. And then you'll see a link, join the Effortless English group also on Gab and put your video there and introduce yourself. Find other people to talk to. You'll be ready. April 20th, I want you to start on the first day strong, start strong. I want you to be speaking English and listening and doing a lot of things very, very strong on the first day, April 20th, right? So this is extra effort. You're already doing English now. You're already doing all of this. But for the three months, I want you doing extra, just like I will be. All righty then. Lots of love to you all. Join my VIP program. And VIP members, remember, I'll be doing extra coaching with you. I want all my VIP members joining this challenge. I really want you to do it. I encourage you. If you're a VIP member, it means you're very motivated. It means you're extra motivated. You should be doing this challenge with me. Okay. So I'll do a video call with VIP members next week. I'll send you the link soon. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. See you next time.